Hello, uh, welcome to COM 317 Digital Foundations Summer Version. My name is Bob Meads. I'll be your instructor for this uh, sprint that we go through in five weeks where you're going to learn a lot about digital communication and hopefully have a lot of fun while you're doing it. I wanted us to do a, a video lecture here to kind of start things off because we miss our first class day being July 4th uh, on Tuesday. And so I wanted to kind of do some of this course over, overview that we would normally do on the first day of class so that when we meet for the first time on Thursday, July 6th, we can hit the ground running is really an introduction to applied visual communication. And in terms of visual communication, we're really focused on kind of the principles and some of the theories and, and the ways in which people process visual information so that we can create messages that will appeal to them, that they will understand, that they will find interesting. The applied part is how do we actually create this kind of content? And so in this particular class, we're just kind of dipping our toes in a little bit and getting started. And the goal here is to get you a foundation of principles and some understanding of some design and visual communication principles and elements, but also give you a little bit of a foundation with the technology that we use to create these materials. Understand that the technology that we use to create visual communications. That technology is always changing. And so the technology that you learn and start to apply in this class is likely going to look very, very different 10 years from now. But the principles, the principles don't really change that much. Good v visual communication doesn't change that much. Think of the software that we're going to use in this course as this, your set of tools, your toolbox that you use to create content. So here's an, an image of some antique tools that I inherited from my grandfather. Um, tools have changed very much in the 100 years or so since, since these particular tools were manufactured. However, they still work. In fact, I still use some of these today. Uh, so it's not so much about the tools. The tools are just things that you have to learn how to manipulate and how to use effectively so that you can create good content. The software that we're going to be using in Digital Foundations includes these packages. We'll be starting out working with Adobe Illustrator. Uh, Adobe Illustrator is an application we use to create what are called vector images. Um, vector images, most logos you see are vector images, graphics that are used in news stories and promotional materials and things like that, information graphics, most of those are vector images. And so that's the application we want to get you uh, familiar with to start to be able to create those. We'll also be using Photoshop extensively. Photoshop deals with what are called raster images, which is a kind of a fancy name for photographs which are made up of pixel information. InDesign, we will be using as a layout program. We'll also be using Premiere Pro as our video editing uh, application, and we'll be using Adobe Acrobat. So these are all applications that you need to activate uh, if you do not already have them. There's a link in the syllabus on how to do that and a link in Canvas, but I'll, and I'll, which I will point out in a minute. Uh, you get these free through CSUF. So, you know, you don't have to pay for them, which is a pretty good value because these are otherwise about 50 bucks a month. Okay, so let's go over a few things in the syllabus, but please do read the syllabus before we have our first class meeting on Thursday, July 6th. But there are a few things I wanted to point out uh, and emphasize especially. So here's my contact information. I do give you my mobile phone during the summer just because uh, the pace is pretty fast and if you need to be able to get a hold of me, sometimes cell phone may be a little easier than email, but for the most part, I will be checking my email many times a day and, and email is the preferred form of communication. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit. So the things that you will need you do need 
uh, access to a computer that is good enough to run these Adobe Creative Cloud applications. And they chew up a, a good bit of RAM. So you need you need to be able to have a co access to a computer that can run them. Uh, if you have a Google Chromebook, that's not going to run these. Uh, a MacBook Air will run a few of them, but will really struggle with video. If you do not have a computer that will uh, that will adequately run these applications, I strongly suggest that you uh, go follow this link right here, uh, the Equipment Long-Term Checkout application. IT has lots and lots of laptops available that they can loan you for the uh, for the summer term and they have laptops that will run these applications so if you don't believe your computer's going to uh, hold up real well uh, follow this link all right to get the software the adobe creative cloud software you want to follow this link and right there is the link that you want the Adobe Creative Cloud. And like I showed you a moment ago, the applications that you want to uh, activate are Photoshop, Illustrator, Acrobat, InDesign, and Premiere Pro. Those are the ones that we'll be using in this uh, five-week session. You also need uh, a subscription to Portfolium, uh, which is a portfolio hosting site that we use in the comm department. So you'll need it not just for 317, but you'll need it to use it throughout your uh, comm career because there are certain assignments that you need to upload to Portfolium as what's called uh, your communications e-portfolio deliverables, which are checked off then when you're in your capstone class. So if you do not yet have a uh, a subscription or a, a, an account with Portfolium, uh, follow this link right here and you can go ahead and set that up and start uh, learning how to use Portfolium. It's, it's pretty easy. Okay, so computer, email, here's the grading scale and notes about deadlines and late assignments. Okay, Canvas, which will take a, a good look at the Canvas site here in a few minutes. Virtually all Everything for this course is done through Canvas. All right, on pages, on page four is where we have a listing of uh, the projects that you'll be doing uh, in this summer session. Uh, four major projects. We'll also have uh, two exams, and then we will also have some lab assignments uh, as well. So it's going to be pretty much you're going to have something due every day. Uh, occasionally you may have two things due in the same day. The first project, which I'll explain in a few minutes, is the typography poster. So we're going to be starting on that actually on Thursday in your first portion of that assignment a font explorations is, is going to be due Thursday night. Uh, so with the typography poster, that will be due on July 13th. Uh, this will be the application we'll be using uh, Adobe Illustrator on. The second project is a B-movie poster and where you will come up with your idea for a movie, uh, a B-movie, and you'll take photos for it and edit those photos, uh, create a poster that has a title, a subtitle, credits, uh, and things of that nature. This is a, a project that uh, a lot of students find really, really fun. The third project is a short video, and so that can be on pretty much any topic you like. Uh, you'll, you'll kind of develop your idea, and then from there you will start to plan it out and create uh, a storyboard and a script for the video, and then you will film it based on following your storyboard, uh, and then you will do the editing on that project in Premiere Pro. Okay, and uh, project two, the B-movie poster, that's our Photoshop intensive app, uh, project. Project four, which is due on the last day of the term, is an interactive PDF in which you, and this is the one that you will also upload to Portfolium in addition to Canvas, but you will create a 
mini portfolio of the work that you do uh, during this summer term. And so you'll show the examples of the projects that you made and then write some self-assessments of it. And we will do this in Adobe InDesign. We'll also have a midterm and a final. And like I said, uh, we will have some lab exercises, probably about half a dozen of them. And a couple of those will be extra credit lab assignments. And of course, at the end of the syllabus is the tentative course schedule. And while I think that's pretty accurate here at the beginning, uh, if there are times we need to make some adjustments to due dates and topics and things like that, we will. So Canvas will actually be uh, your better guide as far as due dates if they have to change and things of that nature. And we'll talk about those in class, but there's kind of a listing of, of what we're up to. All right, let's uh, take a We'll spin through the course canvas page. Um, so there's your syllabus. Here's your Zoom link for both uh, class meeting times and office hours. Uh, my contact uh, info as well. Uh, here is a link to the COM317 YouTube channel. So here you will find a lot of video tutorials and also video lectures. And so you can have a look through through these. Uh, there's also some for COM380, uh, 380, the interactive media design course. But there's a lot of good stuff here on our COM317 YouTube channel. Now, I will also uh, put links in Canvas to all the ones that I really, really want you to watch. So like right there, there's a video tutorial for Lab 1. That's actually on my YouTube channel, not the uh, uh, COM317 one, but, uh, but I'll put links to the ones that I really want you to go through. Uh, video lectures, things like that. So you will find most of these materials on the 317 YouTube channel, but like I said, I will post links to them as well. Um, COM317 Samples of Student Projects. This is a useful site for you to uh, visit and just kind of get a sense of some of the types of, uh, some of the work that, you know, your fellow classmates have done in the last few semesters. So you can look here through Project 1, the typography poster. We'll be looking through a bunch of these on Thursday as well and some different ones as well. Uh, but you can see kind of how they approach the, uh, the typography poster. That's a really good one for... Um, Jackie Robinson, but essentially what you're going to do is create a quote or uh, identify a quote that you want to use, a quote by a famous person or um, a line from a book or a line from a movie or a line lyric from a song or something like that. And then now you're going to try to visualize how you can best express that using only type, no color, no, um, you know, no artwork unless you can create the artwork out of type, such as is with this uh, treble clef. So, uh, so that's the COM317 uh, site, and we'll look at these some uh, as, the, uh, as the summer session goes on. All right, let's go back to the course canvas page. So the modules are organized uh, by weeks, so five weeks for the semester. Uh, and days and the things that you're going to be responsible for each day. And then for each one of the projects, I have another module that will uh, group all of the video tutorials together. These video tutorials, there are a lot of them. Most of them are pretty short. They will save you a lot of time, though, in terms of trying to figure out how to navigate your way around the software. So do use these. There are also many other good tutorials you can find on your own on YouTube or through LinkedIn Learning, which you have access to through the um, CSUF portal if you want to uh, uh, avail yourself of those. The readings and video lectures. So you'll have uh, a few more readings. This is for the first week, but there'll be a few others. Uh, so the readings and the video lectures, that is primarily where uh, you will get your uh, content for the test questions. That will be for the midterm and the final. There will be a little bit of other content, maybe from things we talk about in class, but the majority of what you'll be responsible for on the exams are the readings and the video lectures. Then we've got all of these tutorials. Okay, so in terms of the other parts of the course organization, um, for each one of the projects, 
I have a PDF that will show you the instructions for it. All right, let's take a the, uh, look at the uh, assignment instructions for your first project. Now, all of your major projects will have an instruction sheet that looks kind of like this. Uh, at the top part, it's going to have kind of your, your basic overview, and then the more specific instructions and the steps uh, will be, uh, we'll be following that. So for this typography poster, you're going to lay this out on an 8.5 by 11 uh, inch document can be vertical or horizontal you're only going to use type and you're not going to use any color so it's just black white and gray and then you must also include the name of the person who uh, who said the quote or who wrote it or, or whatever so the steps first off is obviously figure out a quote that you want to uh, uh, that you want to portray visually the second step, and that's going to be due on Friday, July 7th, is what we call font explorations. And what you're going to do there is you're going to search through the Adobe type site, which you have access to, to thousands and thousands and thousands of typefaces through your Adobe subscription. And you're going to search through that type site to find 12 different typefaces or fonts that you think might help you express that quote and then all you're going to do is lay them out on to a document like this I've, I've got a video tutorial that shows you how to do it but it's it's very very easy and then the last part which is going to be due then the following Thursday is your finished poster and so between um, you know, the, the July 6th and July 13th, we'll spend a little bit of time kind of trying to uh, see how your ideas are developing. You can, you can ask me questions and things of that nature. Okay, now let's take a look at the Adobe Illustrator interface. This is the application you'll be using for Project One, the typography poster, and also for the first couple of lab assignments. We'll deal with uh, lab number one in class a little bit on Thursday, July 6th, but you're more than welcome to go ahead and, and start working on it ahead of time. You could probably even get it done uh, by following the video tutorial. But when you uh, open up the application, uh, you know, you've got you know a basic panel here. Whether you want to open a new a file or create a new one, We're, we'll create a new one. And when you create a new file, and you you will see this window come up. And this is going to be very similar with all of the Adobe applications. They're going to give you a few uh, kind of standard template size documents that that tend to be typical. Uh, I'll just pick a, a a letter size document here, and that's a horizontal. Uh, 792 by 612 points. It's also going to uh, let you pick what your output is. And for the most part, we'd be working with print, web, and mobile in, um, in the kinds of things that you would be doing in your comm classes. So why does it want to know what your output is? If you choose print, that is going to give you uh, the CMYK uh, color mode it's also going to put you into um, the resolution of, of 300 pixels per inch. Web or mobile, it's going to put you into the RGB color mode, which is what we use for screens, and it's going to change the resolution to 72 ppi, which is the appropriate resolution for screens. So all of your applications, Adobe applications, will kind of prompt you to, to pick what your output is. For Project One, we'll, we'll just do that as if it was a print document, even though you won't need to print it. Okay, so you go ahead and create the file. So the new file comes up and in this main window here is your document or your page. Illustrator calls your page an artboard and that is based on what we uh, first selected for our uh, for our size. Uh, if you ever need to change your artboard size or change the dimensions of it, it's very easy to do. You go into file document setup. You could also change your color mode if you want to go back into RGB or something like that. But um, go into document setup and then this is where you can set the parameters of your margins and things like that. But we'll go into edit artboards and it'll put a little toggles around the edges of your artboard and if you want to resize it to whatever size you want to make it. Note as I'm 
moving that pixel, it's showing me my new uh, width and height um, measurements. If I want to change the measurements, if you don't really think very well in terms of, oh, I just click on the selection tool here, now it's changed them. To turn on my rulers and see what size I actually have, I just do uh, Command R or Control R on a PC, or I can go into my view menu and say, go say show rulers. And, that, and it's showing me that we're using, um, we're using points as the unit of measurement. If I want to change that, I can take my uh, arrow tool, put it right there in the corner of the ruler, and if I hold down the uh, control key, uh, I can change that to inches or whatever I want to on my measurements. Or I can also do that in my Illustrator preferences and go into my units and change. Okay, so, and most of your applications will have very similar ways in which you can kind of uh, design the workspace into, uh, into something that suits you. On the right, you're going to see some of the more common palettes or windows that you are uh, going to use. Yours may look a little bit different when you first launch Illustrator than mine, but, uh, but you can customize these as much as you want. So I'm, I'm showing up. Um, properties of any any kind of element I'm working with, my Pathfinder tools, transform tools, and some type tools and things like that. On the left, by default, though you can also put your toolbar uh, anywhere you want it, uh, is your standard toolbar. And a lot of your Adobe applications will have some similar tools. Obviously, you probably recognize this as a text tool. Um, with Illustrator, these first two tools up here with the arrows are called selection tools. The, the top one is called the, just the selection tool itself, and the one that's, that's all uh, white uh, is your direct selection tool. And these work in terms of the selection tool selects an entire object. The direct selection tool can select a specific part of an object for manipulation. So let me just take my pen tool and I'm just going to draw a basic shape here. And to use the pen tool, you would think you would just like click and drag uh, and, and you know, freehand draw with it. That's actually not the case. You can do that with a pencil tool, freehand draw, or with a brush tool, But your pen tool, whoops, let me select this. Your pen tool um, works like more like a mechanical pen. And so what you do is you click and put down a point, and then you release, and then you go to where you want to make the next point, and you click, and now it lays down a line at whatever stroke I have set. I just have black stroke and uh, blank fill. And then I have released again, I can go click again, lay down a line. If I click and hold when I lay down a line, I can uh, pull out a bezier curve and I can curve and, and kind of manipulate that end point that I've made. And with drawing points and objects with Illustrator, um, you need to get back to your starting point. You know, and that's called closing the path. And so when I do that, I get back to my starting point, you'll see a little circle right there at the corner of the pen tool indicating that I've reached my, my starting point. Now I click, and now that's an object that I can move around. Let's say I want to put some color in there. I'm going to go to my fill tool, uh, click it twice to bring up a color picker. Uh, I'll put in a, kind of a blue, bluish purple. Um, and then that's my fill. If I want to manipulate the stroke, I can go into my uh, properties palette here and change the stroke from one point to something bigger or something like that. Um, if I use my selection tool, I can click and I can move that around anywhere. If I hold down my option key while I have the selection tool, I can click and drag and it will duplicate an object. Okay, now the direct selection tool, this one here, the second one down, for it, let me click on my object, I can take now any of those particular points that I made and I can adjust them 
change the shape, I can go in and edit that. So that's fully editable there. I can also add points and things like that. But this just gives you a really quick uh, introduction into what some of the tools are. This is your line tool, so you can make lines or also uh, geometric objects such as rectangles, ellipses, polygons, and so on. That's just a, a brief introduction into the uh, interface and the workspace of Adobe Illustrator. Uh, now I want to show you a lab number one so that you, you can get started on that if you want to. And for the first lab, Probably it would be very useful for you to go through some of these uh, Adobe Illustrator tutorials that we have on the COM317 uh, web uh, YouTube channel. So creating a new document, working with the uh, workspace and menus and tools and things like that. That'll go into a good bit more detail than what I just did. Uh, saving your work, save versus save as, changing your views, things like that. Uh, creating bounding boxes, uh, creating type, things like that. Um, so have a look at several of those. You maybe don't need to do all of them prior to lab number one, but these are all good, uh, useful tutorials for you to kind of learn your way around the Adobe Illustrator workspace. To do the lab, we're going to look up at this at week number one. Under week number one, here is the assignment submission part. So lab number one, illustrator, letter form, clipping mask, and so on. And so you will click on that when you've got all parts of it done. And you're going to actually have seven files that you're going to turn in for this. Uh, and so um, that sounds like a lot, but most of these are going to go really, really fast. Uh, and what you will do then is you're going to save each one of these files, each one of these Illustrator files, you're going to do a save as and you're going to choose SVG as the file type. That stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And then when you get all of those loaded in, then you upload your assignment. Okay, so the materials that you'll be using for lab number one, here is a video tutorial on my YouTube channel that will take you through step by step what you're going to do. And then what I want you to do is download each of these files. So there's uh, your instruction sheets on a PDF, but you may find the video tutorial will, will be sufficient for you. Uh, you're going to find uh, the uh, uh, a Pathfinder tool PDF, which is a template that I've made for you to um, we'll look at it here. Uh, this is an example of the what your kind of what your finished first part of the lab is going to look like, only you'll use your initials. So your first and last initial. And this is just showing you different, you're going to create some type, you're going to then convert that type into uh, editable objects, and then you're going to do some Pathfinder um, functions. And the next file down, which, which is the Pathfinder my, uh, my Pathfinder examples dot Adobe Illustrator, that is a template for you to use that will have all this type already on here, the shape modes, unite, minus front, intersect, exclude, original, all that kind of stuff. And so you, uh, that will just save you some time in terms of having to kind of make, organize the file. So that's the first part of the lab is, is uh, manipulating uh, a couple of characters that are in different color, different strokes, and, uh, and that you've converted to objects. The second uh, the other parts, this CSUF emblem, is you're going to take a raster image of the CSUF logo and convert it to a vector image. And then you're going to put your initials into, uh, into the area of the logo where the CSUF lettering would be. And then there's a few others here. Uh, lily pads, giraffe, and Icelandic horse. Those are some uh, photographs that I've taken that I'm going to have you convert into ve vector images and then do some manipulations of colors and things like that. So um, those would be the main files. And then you will have a couple of other files that you will work on that would be from pictures that you have taken yourself where you'll, you will do similar things to uh, the lily pad that are shown in the lily pads, giraffe, and Icelandic horse examples. This video tutorial will take you through that step by step, except for the last two images, which are yours.
that's about it for kind of a course introduction here. So I encourage you to go ahead and get started ahead of time before, uh, before class starts. Uh, look through some of the readings, the video lectures, uh, some of those Illustrator video tutorials. And um, I look forward to meeting you in class on Thursday, July 6th.